Hi, this is Mike. Today I want to talk about RMS voltage, what it is and why it's important. And I'm also going to show exactly how the equation for RMS voltage is derived. And I can promise you that this will be the most clear step-by-step -step derivation of the formula for RMS voltage that you'll find anywhere on the internet or on YouTube. So if you're just curious about what RMS voltage is, that'll be covered on the first part of the video. If you want to see the derivation, then that's going to be the last part of the video. So let's get started. RMS voltage is a way to compare DC voltage to AC voltage and to give a way to calculate power consumption, whether it's an AC circuit or a DC circuit. To get started, let's look at a DC circuit. We've got a 20 volt power source. Let's just say we've got a battery here and a 40 watt light bulb. Let's throw in a graph showing what the voltage does over time. Well, on a DC circuit, the voltage doesn't change. So you see the blue line there representing the voltage stays at 20 uh, regardless of how much time passes. Now looking over to the right, I've got the power equation. Power is equal to voltage squared divided by resistance, or resistance is equal to voltage squared divided by power. If we plug in our numbers, we've got the 20 volts squared divided by 40 watts of power. That gives us a resistance of 10 ohms for that light bulb. Now let's see what we've got on a circuit that's got alternating current. So we've got the same light bulb. We already know that it has 10 ohms of resistance. Now, what voltage does that power source need to deliver in order for that light bulb to consume 40 watts? Well, let's put a voltage source in here, an alternating current voltage source, and you can see the peak voltage is 28.3 volts. So let's do some calculations. Using the power equation, voltage squared divided by resistance, and plugging in the numbers, we go through there and we get the power of that light bulb is 80 watts. So if we use peak voltage in the calculation, 80 watts does not equal 40 watts. So that voltage does not work to allow us to compare a DC circuit with an alternating current circuit. So we've got to come up with something else. And that's what RMS voltage does for us. So let's look at the sine wave. If we simply take the average of all the different voltages along that sine wave, we're going to get zero because you've got some above the zero point on the graph and you've got the unequal number below the zero on the graph. So that's not going to help us. Knowing the peak voltage, we need to be able to calculate another voltage, basically an average voltage that will allow us to calculate power consumption, which will be consistent with what we saw in the DC circuit. So that's where RMS voltage comes in. So let's see how we do that. How do we get the negative voltages out of this curve so that we can calculate a good average? Well, what we do is we square the voltages and that allows us to get rid of the negative voltages. And from that, we can calculate a good average voltage. That will be the RMS voltage that we're looking for. And here's a graph that shows the result of squaring the voltages. So RMS stands for root mean square. And that's calculated by squaring all of the individual voltages in the sine wave, taking the average of the square of those voltages, and then taking the square root of that average. And in equation form, you can see right here what it looks like. So for any sine wave form of a voltage, the RMS voltage is calculated by taking the peak voltage and dividing that by the square root of two. And the square root of two is equal to 1.414. So from our example before, we had a peak voltage of 28.3. And if we divide that by the square root of two or 1.414, we get 20 volts. So that 20 volts is the RMS voltage. And from that, we can calculate power consumption. So let's put that into our equation. So we go back to the graph and we have our 20 volts and calculating power from that 20 volts, we square the 20 divided by 10 and we get 40 watts, which is exactly what we had in our DC circuit. So that's the importance of RMS voltage. It gives us a voltage comparable to a DC circuit. So if we go back to both circuits, we have the DC circuit here and an alternating current circuit here using the 20 volt battery or the 20 volt alternating current source, we calculate 40 watts in both cases. So whenever you're talking about alternating current, such as in our homes, we have 120 volt circuits or 240 volt circuits, or in some industrial uh, settings, you've got 208 volt circuits or even higher. We're always talking about RMS voltage. We are not talking about the peak voltage. So that's what RMS voltage is all about. And I hope that helps you to understand that. Now, if you want to see the derivation of RMS voltage, we'll get into that now. So let's go back to our graph that shows the curve of voltage squared. If we can somehow find the average of all the voltages along that curve, then that will give us the value of RMS voltage squared. And then taking the square root of that average, that will give us RMS voltage. 
So how do we do this? Well, the average voltage squared is going to be the average height of that curve. So how do we calculate that? Well, using some calculus, we can calculate the area under the curve. And the area under the curve is going to equal the average height times the width. Just like calculating the area of a rectangle, which is the height times the width or the length times the width. If we can calculate the area under this curve and divide it by the width, then that will tell us the average height. So we know that the width of this rectangle, or of this voltage squared curve, is 2 pi because we're doing one cycle through the sine wave. And we've got to calculate the area under the curve through integration. So once we have the area under the curve and we divide that by the width, which is 2 pi, the result will be the voltage squared, or the RMS voltage squared. Now this isn't going to be a calculus lesson. I'm going to go through this assuming you already know about integration and how to set up and calculate basic integrals. And the first thing that we have to do to calculate any integral is figure out the equation for the curve. And the equation for the voltage, not the voltage squared, is equal to the peak voltage times the sine of theta, theta being the point along the curve horizontally, the x-axis basically. But we're not working with voltage, we're working with voltage squared. So let's square this equation and see what the equation looks like for the voltage squared. And what we get is voltage squared for any point theta is equal to peak voltage times the sine of theta squared. And going to the next step, I simplified that just a bit, and we get peak voltage squared times sine squared of theta. Now, there is an identity that says that the sine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus cosine of 2 theta over 2. So let's plug that into the equation for voltage squared. And we get voltage squared for any point theta is equal to peak voltage squared times quantity 1 minus cosine of 2 theta over 2. And we can simplify that just a bit by taking that 2 in the denominator out of the parentheses and we'll get voltage squared at any point theta is equal to the peak voltage squared over 2 times quantity 1 minus cosine of 2 theta. So that is the voltage at any point along this curve. So now what we're looking for is the RMS voltage squared and we get that by integrating this equation that we just came up for voltage squared at any point theta and dividing that by 2 pi which is the width of the curve. So what we get here in the third equation that I'm showing is the RMS voltage squared is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of voltage squared theta d theta. And now by plugging in the equation from the top, we get RMS voltage squared is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of peak voltage squared divided by 2 times the quantity 1 minus cosine of 2 theta d theta. Let's simplify just a little bit further by taking the constants out of the integral, and we'll get the peak voltage squared over 4 pi times the integral from 0 to 2 pi of quantity 1 minus cosine of 2 theta d theta. And now when we do our integration, the integral of 1 results in theta from 0 to 2 pi, and integrating cosine of 2 theta, we come up with negative sine of 2 theta over 2, and both of those sets of numbers are going to be calculated from 0 to 2 pi. So in this bottom equation, we have peak voltage squared over 4 pi times the quantity 2 pi minus 0. And then on the right side of the equation, the two negatives cancel out, and we get 1 half sine of 2 theta from 0 to 2 pi. So now let's see what that reduces to. On the left side of the equation, we have 2 pi minus 0, and that simply is 2 pi. And then it's plus 1 half sine of 4 pi minus sine of 0. Well, the sine of 4 pi is 0, and the sine of 0 is 0. So the right-hand side of the equation is just 0 and goes away. So we simply end up with peak voltage squared over 4 pi times 2 pi. Well, we cancel out the pi's, and we get RMS voltage squared is equal to peak voltage squared divided by 2. But we're not looking for RMS voltage squared. We're looking for RMS voltage. So we need to take the square root of all this. Well, the square root of peak voltage squared is just peak voltage. So we end up with... RMS voltage is equal to peak voltage divided by the square root of 2. And that will give us RMS voltage is equal to peak voltage divided by 1.414. And that's how you derive RMS voltage. It's fairly simple with some basic calculus. Now, if you want to get rid of the fraction, you can do a basic calculation and get RMS voltage is equal to peak voltage times 0.707. So either one of those equations gives you RMS voltage. Before we finish up, let's look at a standard 120 volt circuit. So using our equation of RMS voltage is equal to peak voltage divided by 1.414, or peak voltage is equal to RMS voltage times 
and we plug in the 120 volts, we can see that the peak voltage is 169.7 volts. So on our home circuits, we actually have about 170 volts running through our wires, but we call it 120 volts because that's the average voltage or the RMS voltage. But it does peak as high as 170 volts 60 times every second as it goes through its cycle. So that's what RMS voltage is all about. I hope this video has been helpful to you. I hope you now understand what RMS voltage is. I hope you understand how the formula for RMS voltage was derived and why we use RMS voltage instead of peak voltage when we talk about AC circuits, as RMS voltage allows us to basically compare DC circuits and AC circuits and their power consumption. I really appreciate you watching this video. If you liked it, I sure would appreciate it if you'd give it a thumbs up. I make a lot of educational videos like this and would sure appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks again. Take care.